Okay, so I think we got to a good stopping point where I wanted to add end-to-end -end tests so we could start using those instead of uh, constantly referring to the uh, spec. So what I did was I cloned these files here and added it into our a new directory called end-to-end. -end. And what we're going to do is we're going to run those tests, but I think the best course of action is to import them into Postman and then try running it there. So right now I'm just going to start the server. So it's going to be uh, start dev. And once the server started, I'm going to go into Postman and we're going to go import that file, which is this one. Um, boop and go to collections and we're gonna we actually have to add a couple of environment variables so if you go into the file and you look at run api test.shell um that we're gonna need to add these files here so um actually i don't need a copy and paste i'll just add it this way so where where's the thing do, 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 edit. No, uh, here it is, variables. And the first one is going to be API Earl. And the value we're going to persist is localhost, colon, and I believe our port's 4000, slash API. And then another variable for username, and that's going to be um, just my name, I guess. And email, it's going to be kelvin dot no at mail dot com, and then password is just going to be password. And updates. And then let's run. And we have a test runner up. And we can just run Conduit. And Conduit's the name of the, the original app. So as you'll see, everything is failing. And we can actually see how, why it's failing. Uh, so if we go to the register route, and we can check the URL. And that's the correct URL. Uh, we also check the headers, uh, but the important part here is that in the request body, um, this is our data transfer object. And you'll see it's wrapped in a outer object called user. So we have to update our application to um, add to that. We can also check the request body. And here is just like all the errors that we're getting back so let's fix that in our app. So we'll go into uh, the auth module and the auth controller. And credentials is actually going to be, or the body is actually going to be um, an interface that looks like this. So I'm going to wrap this in user is that. And we have to also update what we add to the service. That's the wrong thing. There we go. User dot user. And once our server restarts, uh, we can go back into the runner and do a retry. And now register and login should work. And they do. And let's see what else is. So everything seems to work. Um, we'll, and these are all just other stuff that we need to update or finish with our application. Um, and then here's also like the profile section. So do do this test does not have any tests. Ah, ah okay, I guess. Um, do, 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 do. It looks like the 
get profile is going to need a following property and expected false to be truthy so we need to update that as well and follow is response code is 200 okay expected false to be truthy so yeah we there's a couple of things that we need to fix based on our tests but there's also one last thing that we need to do um, before we do a retry because these tests will fail again the register route is going to fail because there's a conflict. Um, well, that's fine, I guess. Um, the, the conflict being that there's already a user in the database named that. And so we, we're going to update our app to uh, database connection. We're just going to update it to drop schema. True. So that whenever our app restarts, we'll get a fresh database. Um, see, a note on that is like, don't do that in production because you want to keep the data. But since we're doing it in development, this is fine. And then one last thing, they added a shell script inside of run API tests. And um, okay, so I don't have Tmux running, so I'm just going to open up a new window and navigate to our projects, so CDT, see uh, this blog. And we could actually use this shell script uh, inside of our uh, package JSON and just add a NPM script to to run end to end tests. Um, blah, blah, blah. So I added here just like API URL because we need to set the, let me, reopen that file we need to set the environment variable of api url to our um app so that's why i did here and then i'm just running edge run doing a dot slash run test and i also um added the newman uh package which is what's running the uh end to end test in the console um yeah, so let's do that. Uh, I'm just gonna do, uh, whoops, that is the wrong thing. So yarn, test, end to end. And then we could see it running. Um, these are all just stuff. But there's our auth, our login, and our failing tests. So the reason why we add the um, the package JSON script is so that we can run it in the console for one, but also we can run it as part of our uh, CI or continuous integration if we end up deploying that. All right, now let's examine the tests and uh, we can do a retry really quick. Um, this register is fine because we didn't restart the server. Um, and let's fix some failing tests. Because uh, I know there's definitely one in here. So these are articles, which is what we're going to do next. But let's see. Where's the... Here it is. Um, so, no, that's fine. Delete is also fine. Profile. So... We need to update profile. Uh, the follow is giving a incorrect response. Um, let's check the request body, user, and okay. So it looks like we we need to actually get the the user from the um, the body and not from the parameter. And in the regular profile, uh, we need to add the following property. Okay, so uh, which also needs um optional authentication. So we we also need to add that guard. So those are gonna be the two things that we're gonna add. So let's go back to our project and open up our source 
user profile controller and let's do some stuff wait no this should be right but what was the actual error so the test is response code needs to be 200 okay oh okay, okay. and that's because we're doing the default response which is 201 created and that's a so we just need to change the default status code so back in our profile under follow we're gonna add another decorator here so at and I think it's called HTTP status right and that comes from yeah yeah and this is gonna be 200 okay is it just status that what was it? Oh, HTTP code. There we go. And let's get rid of the this. And then finally, we need to update uh, find profile to return the following property. And for that, we're gonna need to create a new file, and I'm gonna call it optional. Uh, auth dot guard dot ts and it's gonna be it's not an injectable so it's gonna be export what class right yeah export class optional auth guard extends auth guard That's there. And uh, let's also add the JWT here. Uh, and we're going to override handle requests. So handle request takes an error user info context. And we'll return the user. All right. And let's check our runner. And let's do a retry and check these two to see if they're correct now. So. Oh my god, I just use a scroll bar. The. Okay, so the follow is, is passing and the following is the following property is not because I forgot we need to actually update the response. But we should have a, the user here. So in here, let's see the unfollow user, follow user. How did I do this? Was in the service? I wanted to add to profile for current users, so where is it? This is under find by username. So I'm going to add um, dot two profile here and we need to add in the current user so entity and let's make it optional because it could be undefined um, we'll do that and then we also want to update our entity to handle the the undefined um, case. So, um, do, 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 do. how did I want to do this? Okay, so I'll I'll do this. Um, if user, we'll do that. And change this to up here. We do let following. 
let's just do that. Because I don't want to return false uh, because that's misinformation. So if you're not signed in, you should get a following as null. Just means that you don't have access to it at that moment. So if we do this and do a retry, um, it should pass. And if it doesn't, we'll do some manual testing. Um, register profile. So we do have the following property. And we can still do the manual testing. So I'm going to go to regular Postman and go to Profiles Jake. And oh, Jake must not exist. So. I know Kelvin exists. Two profile of under cannot read property two profile of undefined. So that's correct. Um, I think. So we turned this off. No, if we turn it on, huh? Did I do something wrong? Okay, so it looks like I forgot to add the actual use guard here. So we need to make sure that it uses the guard so we have access to the user object. And then this is the optional auth guard that we created. Uh, which we have to instantiate and now we could get the user property uh, user which is user entity and then we can pass that into uh, find user by username and I'm gonna turn off uh, drop schema right now so that this will be a little easier to test so where was I the surface no the controller okay so let's go to postman um, let's actually do the retry so we have our users and then we'll go to get and this should give us a true or false value and not a null value if we have our token on. Um, so we'll do a send. It includes of undefined. Okay. That. Let's see, I'm using. I use includes in the entity. Includes on follower. Oh, okay. So in our service. Find by username. Uh, we have to actually get the following follow not it's like relations followers uh, we actually have to have that property to be able to run to profile so yeah it looks fine it looks a little weird but I'm okay with it um, so going back to postman we can run this test again and we have a false value and we do a post to follow uh, since we're still signed in with this token um, it is now true and then if we get the profile it should be false and if we become unauthenticated we should still get a profile with a property of null so yeah, we're doing a little bit of uh, test-driven development now, and we can start doing things. Um, I didn't do current user and update user. Thought I did. So it turns out that current user and update user, uh, we also have to fix the body um, because of the envelope issue that I forgot about. So 
Let's open up the user controller and wrap the body in a thing. So this is going to be here and is I think it's just one user. So let's see current user request body wait update user request body is going to be yeah and so it's inside of user so let's do that this is the wrong one uh, so this is going to be now data.user um, find current user I'm in the controller right okay cool and if we do a retry, update user should be good. No, no, I, I'm, I'm forgetting. The response also needs to be this. So user service dot update user. User service update user. So we need to. Do the const user equals and then um, that's not it. Find my username. Wait, no, that's up here. To profile. Find my username. Alright, so I'm going to do const user equals to await and then return user inside of an envelope. And that's to profile, which is kind of okay. And then also in find my username, we can do this. Oh. Okay, you know what? I'll do this. Const user equals here. Found um you know what? That's that's fine. I'll I'll do that. And then in the controller I'll do a const user equals and return user like that. And then add the await here and add async here and our runner should uh, start passing these two. There's definitely some refactoring that we could do. Um, user has token property. And so it looks like we want token on the current user and update user, which does make a lot of sense if you think about it. So I think I'm going to do a little bit of refactoring now. Um, so. I want to move um, update user out of the user service as, and into the auth service. Just so we have access to the JWT service, which I don't feel comfortable moving to other services. So what I'm going to do is um, in the auth module, I'm going to do an export here of the auth service. I believe I can do that. And the user module is already importing auth service, so uh, we could use it in the controller. So let's see. And uh, where am I? So the auth service has the user repo. So I could definitely just move uh, update user uh, into the auth service here and this could be changed to um, cause user equals to await this 
and that's fine. And then we need to import the update user DTO, which is also fine. It's out of the space. Um, and the controller, I'm going to change this to auth service. Auth service here. And change all of these to auth service. And for find by username, I'm also going to change to uh, auth service here. I'm going to just, uh, let's, let's add it here. So async, um, find current user. And what are we giving it? Just the name? Okay, so I uh, can do the cons user equals to await this dot user repo dot find where the username which we need in here, which is a string, and this is misspells and we can do return user like so um, we actually want to do the same thing that we're doing here so we're going to take these two um, add it up here and do uh, dot 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 user dot to json comma token oops user entity oh we need to find one and add that up here do the same thing. Token. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm going to copy this line too. Paste. And we can get rid of all this. Save that. Uh, let's do some cleanup in user service. Uh, this, we don't need anymore. And then in the user controller, this is now called find current user. And uh, we're enveloping it in there. So. I don't need to do this anymore. I can just do return here. And I think that'll be good. So in our runner, we'll do a retry. And that should allow us to have our updated and refactored update user and current user. Login still works. Registers failing because I turned off uh, drop schema.